as Wurzlaw, who produce both scrubber systems and LNG systems. Um, we have talked a bit about this alternatives for um, SOX emission compliance. Um, the easiest, the most convenient is, of course, to change fuels. Um, then again, this has a very big impact on the operating costs. And we have the LNG option, which is uh, very good in terms of reducing uh, NOx and uh, PM. Um, then again, um, the investment cost is very big. Um, and also for vessels uh, who are trading longer uh, routes, uh, the um, uh, fuel tanks would need to be huge, uh, which is also impacting the cost. Um, it, it has uh, some good use for uh, vessels, smaller vessels that trade um, on fixed routes where they know that LNG is, is widely available, so it's uh, absolutely an option. Uh, but yeah, uh, it needs to be evaluated by case to case uh, scenario and, and as a rule of thumb, um, it's probably not the best option for the larger vessels that trades longer routes. Now to my favorite option, the scrubber. Um, this allows you to operate the vessel basically as you would uh, before without an uh, abatement uh, system. You can optimize the scrubber solution to uh, the way you want to operate the vessel. Uh, it has a low life cycle cost, um, but then on, on the downside, the return of investment is uh, subject to the price difference between MGO and HFO. Um, but as we have heard here today, it's unlikely that this price difference will be very low. Um, a scrubber system can be uh, uh, customized and tailorized to fit your needs. Um, there are a lot of different uh, options and um, there is always an option to tailor make the system to uh, your vessel and to, to your um, operation. Um, of course there's the option of inline and uh, Venturi scrubbers. The inline being a favorite among uh, cruise ship owners and um, uh, ferry uh, owners, uh, especially for retrofits where we can uh, remove the silencer and fit an inline scrubber in its place. Uh, for most merchant vessels, the Venturi scrubber is the better option, being that it gives more flexibility. And you have the hybrid uh, open loop and closed loop systems. Uh, the hybrid system, of course, enables you to operate uh, both in uh, low upland areas and open seas in open loop and then closed loop in, in uh, zero discharge areas. Um, so it has a full operational flexibility. Um, and the hybrid has been the most popular system. Uh, at least uh, up until now that we are seeing a lot of inquiries from VLCC owners. Um, and for uh, the VLCC owners, the uh, open loop system seems to be uh, very uh, popular. Um, the main reason is probably that the VLCCs are rarely or never going to a low alkalinity area or a zero discharge area. Uh, then you have the closed loop system. Uh, which is a specialized system for uh, low alkalinity areas and vessels that are operating only in these areas, such as vessels operating in the Great Lakes. Uh, further customization can, of course, be done. We have special concepts for special vessels. We have a cruise concept, a ferry concept. We have a VLCC concept. Um, which is concepts where we uh, have, well, kind of thought out what is applicable for the different kinds of, of vessels. 
Uh, also, there's a number of options uh, that you can customize the system with. Uh, of course, you can have redundancy for added reliability. Uh, you can have an extraction fan for eliminating the back pressure of the scrubber. You can have a booster fan for um, eliminating uh, the risk of uh, back pressure from the scrubber uh, influencing the boilers. Uh, you can have an open loop water cleaning system um, in order to well, further uh, clean the water before discharge. Um, you can also have a sludge dewatering system which will reduce the weight of the sludge by approximately half uh, for both uh, open loop if you have an open loop water cleaning system and for closed loop where you need a cleaning system. Uh, you can have a booster pump uh, that, and a specialized venturi for added PM removal. Um, and uh, well, as has been mentioned earlier today, PM is something that are likely to come as legislation in the future. So this is something that we have taken into, taken into consideration. Uh, this can also be retrofitted, this, uh, this solution. Um, we have a 2020 solution. Um, and when it comes to a 2020 solution, we much uh, more recommend to have a system that is fully comply uh, compliant both for 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, but has a 0 0.5 uh, mode, uh, which will enable power saving, uh, rather than limiting the vessel to 0 0.5. Um, then we have the option for open loop VGP compliance through reaction water um, and we have also developed uh, a scrubber EGR system that we are currently testing on a vessel uh, where we will be able to reach tier 3 with a scrubber and EGR combined. Um, so in essence with a scrubber system we can catch sulfur particles and reduce NOx. Um, there has been a lot of talk about return of investment uh, here today, um, so um, I think it's in its place to have a case study for return of investment. This case study goes over three slides, so uh, please try to follow me. <laughs> um, this uh, vessel has a total engine power of 11 megawatts, so uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be a product tanker, it can be um, almost any vessel um, with uh, 11 megawatt installed power. Uh, we have set a price delta of um, MGO and HFO of $220 per ton. Um, and uh, we have chosen a fuel of 2.5% sulfur uh, because this is closer to the world average than 3.5, but of course 3.5 uh, is also applicable. Um, I'm sure a lot of you want to discuss the price delta here, but uh, bear with me. Uh, it might be higher in the future, it might be lower in the future. Uh, I checked this morning, it was around 200, dependent on where you are. Um, specific fuel oil consumption of 190 grams per kilowatt hour, and an uh, operational period of 360 days. Might be a bit long. Um, an operational profile of 70% uh, average power um, seagoing and uh, duration of 252 days. And then uh, the reminder of the duration of days in, uh, in port and an average power in port of 25%. So uh, this is a bit of a, um, uh, well, a careful um, approach because usually you would have well, more power seagoing, more duration of the day seagoing than uh, the proportion in, in port. And this will, well, even better the example. I guess not too um, surprising, the open loop uh, system comes out the best in terms of annual savings. This is, of course, because it doesn't consume um, uh, caustic soda. Uh, the closed loop system comes out first because it consumes the most caustic soda. Yeah. And the hybrid is the best. Um, so, um, yeah. 
what we end up with um, if we take the total capex of uh, both the system price and the installation cost is that you'll have a payback time of one and a half years approximately for an open loop. Closed loop you'll have a bit more than three years and then a hybrid of a bit more than two years. So all of them are fairly good. We have um, a lot of re uh, references, but these are three of the ones that we are especially proud of. Um, Harmony of the Seas, the biggest cruise vessel in the world with the biggest scrubber system in the world. Uh, Clipper Quito and Porsche, uh, which is uh, the first VLGCs with scrubber systems. And then uh, Wilhelmsen Talata. Um, all, what's common for all of these customers is that uh, they have come back to us for more. I think that says something about the quality that we deliver. I guess I'm very soon out of time, but we have 93 uh, installations. Uh, this is 93 different vessels, uh, 190 scrubbers, and more than 2,600 megawatts in between them. And um, we have been through most, uh, mostly all kinds of, uh, of uh, vessels um, and uh, all market segments. We have delivered open loop, closed loop, hybrid, inline, dual water, uh, multi inlet scrubbers. So we have basically done it all when it comes to scrubbing. Thank you. <laughs>